and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at this Radio Shack Pro 2006 scanner that I recently picked up at a ham fest. So what I'll do first is go through the basic programming and operation of the scanner. I know some of you are watching this video just for that. So the way that the memory is laid out on this scanner is that there are 10 banks of 40 channels each to make up the 400 channel capability of the scanner. And what that allows you to do is turn on or off individual banks based on what you want to listen to at a given time. So in order to program a memory, the first thing I'm going to do is get the scanner into manual mode by hitting the manual button. And you can see up here from the word manual in the corner that we are in manual mode and we're currently on channel 12. Now I want to write a frequency into memory channel 1, so in order to get there, I'm just going to simply type in the 1 and then hit the manual key and that brings me to channel 1. So now that we're at channel 1 you can see it's all zeros which means that the channel is empty. So in order to program a frequency in what I'm going to do is hit the program key down here and you can see that program is lit up over here in the screen and now what I'll do is just type in the frequency that I want. In this case it's going to be 452.975 and then hit enter and that frequency is now written into channel 1. Now one other thing I like to do when programming a memory frequency is to turn the delay on by simply hitting the delay key but you can go back and do that at any time I just like to do it when I program in the memory so I don't forget. So what the delay feature does is it causes the scanner to wait a few seconds before resuming scan after a transmission has ended. One other thing to note before we move on and program the next frequency is that because this is channel 1 there's a little P indicator here indicating that this is the priority channel. More on that later on in the video. So if I want to program the next channel, which in this case would be channel 2, you can see I'm still in program mode. So all I have to do is go over here and hit the program key again, and it'll automatically increment to channel 2, and I can put in a frequency just like I did for channel 1. In this case, I'm going to do 462.525. Hit enter turn on the delay and then I can move on and program as many channels as I want in succession. Now you can see in this case channel 3 already has a frequency in it but I can overwrite that if I want to by just simply typing in whatever I want over top of what's here. So maybe what I'll do is put in 162.475 I'll hit enter and you can see that that is now the frequency that's programmed in for channel 3. So to exit program mode all you have to do is hit the manual or scan buttons depending on which function that you want to go into. Now that I've got a few channels programmed into memory I'm going to go back and do more of a complete overview of the scanner so if you're interested in that stick around if not <laughs> thanks for watching up to this point. So as I mentioned before the scanner has 400 programmable channels. It's also got 10 monitor channels that can be programmed and used and it's also got limit scanning capability and you can use that to search a particular range of frequencies. So this scanner also covered wider frequency ranges than some of the other scanners of the day. This scanner has the ability to also scan AM, narrow FM, and wideband FM. So in fact if you want to program in a FM radio station in this scanner and listen to it you can do that. So you can see on the back of the scanner there is a trap door here for a 9 volt battery and what that does is that helps keep the memories programmed in the scanner if you unplug it for a period of time. Over here you can see there is a DC power jack so you can run this thing off of 13.8 volts. There's a jack for an external speaker and also an RCA jack for line level recording out. The antenna connection on this unit is a BNC connector. And then over here is a nice feature that I really haven't seen on any other scanners and that is a 10 dB attenuator. I'm not sure if you guys can see the embossed lettering here but it's currently in the 0 dB or off position but you can click it over here and put on that 10 dB attenuator if you need it. Not sure if you guys can see it in the scanner but there's a hole in the cover here and that is to accept a telescoping whip that you can put on the scanner if you live in an area where there's a lot of strong signals and don't need an external antenna. One last physical feature about this scanner that I like are these integrated flip up feet. So if you want to flip those up and have the scanner at a little more of an angle you can do that or you can fold them back up and have it sit flat on your table. So taking a look at the front panel of the scanner you can see here there is an 8th inch headphone jack and of course the volume controls here 
and then the squelch control is here. And this works like a standard squelch, you just turn it up until the noise disappears and you should be good to go. Next up is the sound squelch feature. You can see I currently have it off, but if I turn the button on, you can see that this red light turns on to let us know that sound squelch is in effect. So basically what this does is it allows the scanner to resume scanning if it's on a signal that has no audio to it, just a dead carrier, so to speak. Now, of course, depending on what you're listening to and the situation, that may be a useful feature to have, or maybe it's gonna cause the radio to scan when you don't want it to. Whether you use it or not, it'll kinda depend on the situation, I suppose. Over here next to that is a switch for the backlight, and you can see that whether I turn it on or off, it has no effect. The backlight on this scanner is unfortunately burned out. Now the backlights on this model scanner and a lot of the realistic scanners from this vintage used an electroluminescent strip behind the LCD and just over time those things fail and that's what's happened to this one. So at some point in the future I do want to repair that and if I do I'll make a video and document that. So if you're interested in seeing that process take a look down in the description and you may find a link to the repair video. And then over here of course is the keypad that we've already been using to program the scanner but what I'll do now is go through all of the features here now in more detail. So first up is the manual key and of course this puts the scanner in manual mode and if you continue to press it the channels increment one by one up through all the memory banks. So in addition to incrementally scrolling through the channels by hitting the manual key over and over you can also go to a specific channel in the manual mode by simply typing in that channel number and then hitting manual again. And you can see I've gone directly to channel 40. Hitting the scan button of course starts the scanner scanning. So once the scanner is in scan mode, you can turn on and off which of the 40 channel banks that you want to scan. Right now you can see I'm only scanning bank 1 as indicated by the flashing bar underneath the 1 there. If I want to turn on some of the other banks, I just hit their corresponding number on the keypad. So I'll turn on 2, 3, and 4, and you can see it's now scanning all of the frequencies that are programmed in these banks. And again, if I want to turn off one of those banks, I just hit the number again, and now that bank is off and all those channels are skipped. The next button turns the delay on and off for each memory channel. We talked a little bit about that during the programming, but what this does is it causes the scanner to delay scanning for a few seconds after a transmission has ended on a particular frequency. Next up is the lockout button, and what that does is that locks a particular channel out of the scan. So for instance, this channel here has one of the weather frequencies programmed in it right now. If I hit scan, you'll see that it's going to stop on that frequency each time because there's always going to be a signal there. So if I push the lockout button and turn the feature on, you can see that it appears on the display there. And now when I hit scan, the scanner will not lock on to that frequency. But it's still there in the memory database if I want to tune to it manually. So the lockout review button causes the scanner to manually increment through all of the channels that are locked out. So you can see I've started off here on memory channel 1, which has no lockout on it. But if I push lockout, it automatically goes to the first channel that's locked out, which is channel 3. If I push it again, it now goes up to 25, which is a blank channel and so on and so forth. So the next button is the priority button and what that does is it puts the scanner into priority mode. What you can do is you can pick any channel, one is selected by default, to be the priority channel and that's indicated by this little P right here. So if I go to any other channel and then hit priority, you can see that it lights up in the display here and every few seconds you may be able to say, see the display kind of flash over and it briefly checks channel 1 for any activity. And if there was activity there, it would lock on to and stay on that priority channel. And priority mode works in both manual and scan modes. So as the radio is scanning, it's also checking the priority channel every couple of seconds. If you want to turn off priority mode, you just simply hit the priority button again. So by default, the priority channel is set as channel 1, but you can make the priority channel any channel that you want on the scanner. To do that, you simply push the program button and then type in the channel you want. I'm going to pick channel 40 and then hit the priority key and now you can see that the P is on channel 40. If we go back into manual mode, go to channel 1, you can see that the P is gone 
in channel 40 is now the priority channel. So the next feature is the speed key and what that does is it changes the scan of the speed between 25 channels per second and 13. I believe the 25 channel per second is the default. Pushing this once puts it in the 13 second per channel mode and then pushing it again goes back to 25. Okay, so the next button is the mode control button. Now by default, the radio will set the correct mode based on the frequency that's active at any given time. But if you want to override that, that's where the mode key comes in. So right now we're in the aircraft band, so the default mode is AM. If I push this once, you can see it moves over to narrow FM. And if I push it again, it goes to wide FM. Pushing it a third time brings it back to AM. For the moment, I'm going to skip the step button because that's more used in conjunction with limit scanning, and we'll cover that in a minute. The next feature is the reset button. Now, you may have noticed here that on this channel, the AM is blinking. And what that indicates is that at some point, we used the mode key to override the automatic mode setting. So pushing the reset key just kind of resets this back to whatever default mode should be in effect for this frequency. You can see once I've done that, the AM stops blinking, and that means that AM is the default mode for this channel. So next up, let's take a look at limit scanning. So in limit scan mode, the scanner will scan between a range of frequencies that you program in. So you can program up to 10 different scan ranges in this scanner, but I'm going to start off with just the first one. So after hitting the arrow button, the scanner is now in search mode as you can see here, and it's scanning up through some frequencies in the 444 megahertz range or thereabouts. So if I want to change the scan range, what I'll do is I will hit program, and then I'll hit limit. And you can see here on the screen, I have an L, which means lower limit, and 1, which means range 1. And this, of course, is the frequency that we'll program in for that lower range. So I'm going to change this over, and I'm going to put in 153.000 and hit enter and then I'm going to hit limit again to change the high limit frequency and we'll punch that in as 155.000 hit enter and now that is the top range so while we're here you can also change the radio's mode between narrow FM wide FM and AM but in this case I'm going to leave it on narrow FM and you can also change the frequency step by hitting the step button. And you can see by default it's set at 5 kilohertz, but the choices are 12.5 kilohertz and 50 kilohertz. I'm going to leave it at the 5 kilohertz default. And then once I'm done programming to initiate the search, I just hit the up or down arrows again, whether I want to scroll up through the frequencies or down. So this time I'll hit the down arrow. And you can see now the scanner is just searching through that frequency range in 5 kilohertz steps. And of course it's in narrow FM mode. As I said before, you can program in up to 10 different scan ranges in this radio. So right now this number 1 right here shows that we are in scan range number 1. So in order to change the scan ranges, you kind of have to already be in search mode like I am now. And then hit the number key that correlates to the range that you want to scan. So in this case I'll pick 2. And you can see it goes over to 2, and now you can see it's scanning frequencies in the 25 to 26 megahertz range. And if I want to program this range, it's done pretty much the same way. Just hit Program, Limit, and now you can see there's a number 2 here indicating that we're programming the lower and upper limits for range 2. And now I've got range 2 set to scan the 2 meter amateur band. So the scanner also has 10 monitor channels that are used sort of like a scratch pad memory in conjunction with the range scanning feature. So right now I've got the scanner in range scan and if it locks on to a frequency that I want to save in one of the monitor channels as it has just done now, you can hear there's some activity there. All I have to do is push the monitor button while it's in the range scan and it will automatically put that frequency into whichever one of these monitor channels is currently blinking. And then if I resume the range scan, so now you can see that the number 2 is blinking, indicating that the second monitor channel is now active. So if I push monitor again, as you can see it locked onto another frequency, that'll now get stored in monitor channel 2. 
and now I can just keep going and fill up those monitor channels if I want to. So to review what's been stored in the monitor channels, I first stopped the range scan by putting the scanner into manual mode. So now what I'll do is hit the monitor button. You can see that the channel number in the display has disappeared, and you can see that the number one up here is blinking, indicating that we're looking at monitor channel one right now. Now you can increment through these by hitting the monitor button, and you can see it'll go up sequentially, or you can type in whatever channel that you want to look at and it'll go directly to that. So you can easily transfer what's been stored in one of the monitor channels over to a regular memory channel. So the first thing to do is in manual mode, go to the channel that you want to write the monitor frequency into. So in this case, I'm going to pick channel 250. So what I'll do now is hit the program key and then the monitor key. Okay, so now I can pick whichever one of the monitor channels I want. So for this example, I'll say I want monitor channel two. So you can see it's gone over to channel two. And then I just hit enter and that writes it into channel 250. Okay, so I think I'll end the video with some samples of the scanner in action. But otherwise, that's gonna wrap things up for the old Radio Shack Pro 2006. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which you'll find linked in the description below. Thanks for watching. Columbia 24 code 1, can intercept plane field number 167, 167 Weston Road for altered metal status. TN Ambulance 543 transporting BLS to Rockville. Ambulance 543, transport to Give you with a repage for the Musa Ambulance, adding Canterbury Ambulance to mutual aid. 31, sick person, 167 Weston Road. Yeah, so was the farmer here, we'll flying to Long Meadow. 50 Benson Drive. 50 Benson Drive and Harris Drive in Chestnut Street. New 125. 83 year old male, leg swelling, able to ambulate. Summer's in, ambulance to East Long Meadow. 50 Benson Drive, New 125. 83 year old male, leg swelling, unable to ambulate. 125, 83 year old male, leg swelling, unable to ambulate. Summer's Medic 1. Summer's Medic 1. Medic 1, they want a Medic 2 or just a BLS ambulance? Medic 1, they didn't uh, specify the uh, CAD indicates ALS. Give you with a repage, Canterbury Ambulance. 31, six person, 167 Weston Road, mutual aid to Plainfield. Operate 3038. Medic 1, copy, go stand down. Unless they call back and use it. Greg, can you check on a report of Storage coming out of a manhole, 1301 Main Street in the field. Arrival, Rockville. Email 543 off Rockville. Street of Basel Department. Station M for Mohegan R1 Mutual Aid. And checking on an American Medic, 3388 Priority 1 Cardiac Distress, 380 Salem Turnpike, Elmbrook Village, Department 106. Alright, so you're responding 24 code 1, paramedic intercept Basra 380 380 Salem Turnpike, apartment number 106. Due to the cold chest at apartment, Arbor 3382, commercial fire alarm 53 Miller Road, alternative services.